what comics have you been reading lately? I have recently gotten back into the every Wednesday thing. It's been a long time since I was like a, a, a Wednesday warrior. What, once I had my second kid, basically everything, <laughs> everything fell off. And I, a couple of years ago, I did the um, comiXology. I was having one of those uh, super sales. Uh, and I bought all these old, uh, you know, Marvel uh, masterworks and epic editions or whatever for like a dollar or two a piece. And once I bought like 30 of these, I was like, I never need to go to the store ever again. And I didn't. <laughs> so I just I just recently started uh, back into the habit with uh, I, I got intrigued with the uh, the one hand and the six fingers. Just saw so much stuff about that uh, online. I was like, I got to try this out. And I loved it. Uh, I got, I think I got uh, the six fingers one first. Uh, and I was like, I thought it read totally great on its own. And I was like, wow, I got to, I got to pick up the one hand to see what the, you know, the other thing's about. And I liked that just as much, maybe even more. I was like, well, now I got to, you know, keep coming back, you know, to make sure I'm up on all this shit. Uh, I, th I think the, up until then, basically the only thing I was going into uh, once a month was I would, I would go to the store for Savage Dragon and then whatever else I needed to buy to get over $10 so I could use my credit card. <laughs> but now I'm like, I'm reading, uh, I'm reading that. I'm uh, getting Tony Fleece and uh, Trish's uh, Feral, the Dawn Runner, a Conan is super good these days. Uh, I'm reading the old Kirby Fantastic Four, uh, always by Savage Dragon. Uh, Fist of the North Star is coming out from Viz, all sorts of shit, man. I'm, 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 I'm in it to win it these days. Transformers, all sorts of good shit. So, so let me go back now, because you just mentioned a whole lot of stuff. So I, yeah. I want a little more detail on a couple of these things. So you mentioned yep. uh, the Kirby Fantastic Four. Have you like gone back to the beginning? Are you doing any particular storyline or anything? I'm, uh, a couple years ago, I started reading all of the Marvel Universe like from the jump. And I, was, I, I found uh, there's some Twitter account, like A Marvel A Day where they have all of the Marvel comics in like chronological order and they just read, you know, one comic a day. So I was, I started off doing that, uh, doing that order and it got a little, a little annoying. Cause like w if you're not locked into, uh, you know, you know, reading the Hulk or whatever, it's just like, it becomes, you know, it feels like homework rather than something I was really like engaged with reading. So it's was I was bouncing back and forth between all of it semi chronologically uh, so I've been basically bouncing back and forth between, you know, Thor, Captain America, uh, Fantastic Four is the, the big one. And then there's <laughs> one of the first crossovers ever was this uh, uh, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. was crossing over with, with Captain America. And this really weird, like barely mentioned uh, AIM slash them uh, crossover slash Hydra or whatever crossover. And when I when I read that for the first time, not expecting it at all, it's like this is like a hidden little gem of history that basically no one ever talks about. It felt like I was like really uncovering something new and exciting, which was pretty neat. Uh, and then it also crosses over into Namor and the Hulk. And then it kind of, it kind of all falls apart at the end a little bit. Like they, they got a little over ambitious and they're just like, eh, the end, I guess. Uh, but it's for a while, it is super exciting, especially if you're not, you know, really expecting it uh you know to happen like wait a minute that's that guy from that other thing uh so that was that was pretty exciting to uh to stumble on and then the the, the steranko nick fury if you've been reading all the uh you know all the the kirby don heck you know ditko stuff uh, you know which, which they're very panel by panel oriented and then steranko who i guess is now a total dickhead but uh you know 50 years ago he was awesome uh you know, he starts, you know, really operating on a page by page basis. And it is just like, because I was like fully into like just reading like comics from, you know, the 1960s. And then, you know, you get this Steranko Nick Fury stuff. And it's like, I can fully understand how this, you know, base, I mean, he basically drew 15 comics ever. And he's like a, you know, towering legend, you know, ever since. And there's a reason why it's a shame he's a dickhead now, but like these comics really are something special. Yeah, he he certainly has you know a reputation. Let's put it that way. I have I have some story you know at least one story I could tell you about him myself. But you know we'll right save on. that for another day. <laughs> he's from my my hometown of Reading, Pennsylvania, so he's oh, still right floating on. around there, and uh, yeah, that's how we've crossed paths. But anyway, um, Conan, you mentioned Conan. That I've paged through that at the store and. 
man, the artwork is yeah, gorgeous, it is right, super good. Yeah, I, I was talking to a bunch of guys at the uh, at the convention I went to recently. His name Roberto Della Torre is the guy who is like the the second coming of uh, uh, John Buscema. It's amazing. Here's number just the reprint of uh, Conan the Barbarian number two, written by Jim Zub, who does a fine job. But then Roberto Della Torre just knocks it out of the park. Dean White on the colors. It is amazing. So good. Uh, and, you know, you know, kills the bad guys and whatnot. Like, <laughs> what happens is almost secondary to just, you know, looking at the amazing pictures that this dude is just fucking nailing it. And the, uh, the Transformers, have you been reading any other of the Energon Universe titles or just Transformers? Or? Uh, just tra- I, did, I did covers for... Uh, Cobra Commander, but I haven't I haven't actually read any of. I flipped through the I flipped through it, and it looks super super dope. But I haven't you know sat down and dug in. I couldn't find all the Duke issues, uh, and I was like, do I need to read everything? Yeah, the hell with it. So uh, you know you know here's the problem: they never sent me my comp copies of issue one. So that's that's the real problem. If I would have gotten my ish, my you know copies of issue one, maybe I'd read this thing. So it's all it's all Skybound's fault. Get your shit together, guys. <laughs> Transformers is super great. Issue six was sold out, so I haven't I haven't finished off the uh, the opening arc yet. Uh, I I did I did buy number seven, but I haven't you know cracked it open yet. I don't want to spoil myself. But super yeah. good. Daniel Warren Johnson, man, that dude knows how to make some awesome comic books. Yeah, I can't remember if he's coming back for another arc or if he's just going to write it for now and then he's going to go back. Did I? Oh, I think he might be do, going back to the wrestling one. Is that true? Did I make that up? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever the wrestling one was called was fucking amazing. That was a, maybe the best comic of last year or one of them. If, if you can if you can make me... I don't know if I actually cried, but I definitely welled up at that intergalactic wrestling comic. <laughs> amazing work. What was that one called? Uh, I think it's Do a Powerbomb. Oh, I'm not familiar with it. I'll definitely it's, have to check it out. It is great. It's super good. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's got all the crazy, you know... You know, you know, Daniel Warren Johnson, you know, speed lines and, and action scenes, but, it's, you know, anchored with, uh, yeah, anchored with like a really sad, like family story. And, uh, you know, she's trying to basically, she, she goes to this intergalactic wrestling competition. Like if you win, it's almost like in Dragon Ball. Like if you win the competition, you get one wish and she wants to see your dead mom again or something like that. It's super good. Um, I, uh, recently read your um uh doom patrol series and oh thank man, you dude your artwork is just firing on all cylinders well hey thanks a lot man i appreciate it i uh i was flipping through it recently uh we recently got the trade i was like oh damn pretty good nailed it <laughs> and there's like it, it was the first time in a long time that i was uh having to actually do a book on a monthly basis and so you're you're drawing so fast that there's a fair amount of stuff that I basically don't remember drawing, and then you know going back to it, it's like all right, oh yeah, <laughs> now I remember that, and like the design of the trade paperback is really cool, and like the title, you know, the title page is like you know taken from a spread, you know, you know later in the series, and so that was that's pretty cool to just like you know you know see my art in a totally different context, just like oh yeah, even devoid of whatever story I'm trying to tell, like this particular drawing is dope. <laughs> Good work me. <laughs> so that's nice. <laughs> it felt, it felt also like the, the story and the characters and stuff, the, the, you know, oddity of it sort of yeah. fits your personality a little bit, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, Dennis, Dennis Culver uh, and I were, you know, in the same studio for, for years. And so our, our sensibilities were pretty locked in on what, you know, what we were going to be able to, you know, you know, really nail. And so it, it definitely feels like exactly the sort of, you know, thing that I've always wanted to do. It's pretty great. Very similar to Savage Dragon, I would say, actually, which is funny because Eric, you know, drew, you know, Doom Patrol as he was, you know, one of his first, you know, real, you know, big two gigs. Do you have any projects coming up? I am, uh, right now I'm working on uh, the t- some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Jason Aaron for the big I guess relaunch is what they're calling it. It's it's not a it's not a restart. Like it do, it does you know continue the uh, the the continuity that's been going for however many years over at IDW. But it's a it's definitely a definitely a I don't know soft reboot relaunch whatever. Uh, you you could very easily start with the alpha issue or just start with the number one issue and you'll be 
totally fine. So, Sophie Campbell's done an amazing job with turtles for the last 15 years, but you don't need to know any of that shit <laughs> to enjoy our comics. And working with Jason Aaron, that's kind of a big deal, right? Yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, uh, we worked together a couple times on uh, uh, Thor. Uh, there were like a couple like big kind of like anthology issues, you know, where there was like, you know, bouncing back and forth in time or, you know, showing various Thors throughout the universe. So we did, on the last issue, I did uh, a story with the planet Thor, which was pretty cool. Like that was, that was a pretty cool thing to, uh, you know, to be the first person to draw. And then I also drew, there was that necro sword, whatever that thing was called. Like when the, the necros, like Galactus and Ego are fighting with the necro sword and Ego gets the necro, necro the living planet or some, some crazy stupid thing. I can't remember, but that was pretty cool. Awesome, Chris. Well, Thank you so much for taking time out of yeah, your busy of day to talk to us. Um, we got some great recommendations. Definitely going to have to be reading some things now. And I'm, I'm super pumped for this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book. Uh, yeah, thanks, man. I'm uh, very excited for it to you know finally get out there. People, uh, people to buy it and for me to sign it. Uh, no, I didn't draw a single turtle at this uh, the convention I went to uh, over the weekend. I guess the... Uh, the news of it hasn't filtered down to the uh, street level or whatever. I'm still drawing, you know, Damien and Robot Man. So, but I'm very excited to uh, start drawing Donatello at these conventions. I think they'd be much faster to draw <laughs> a turtle <laughs> than Robot Man. 